What up, y'all? It's your boy Chance. Um, mm. Sorry, guys. I busted my fucking mouth open earlier today. I'm doing yard work. I freaking cut a branch from my Jones Bay boy nodding off. But. Mm. But. Uh, there is something I would like to speak on, and that's something that not a lot of people know about. Like, now, this is in no way negative. I'm um, actually explaining, you know, my life growing up, how I was born, how I was adopted, and all that, because a lot of you guys might not know. So, hold on one minute, y'all. Oh my god, this camera's dirty. Oh my god. And yes, I'm going to be in a dark room, but that's because I don't have a light in here yet. So I do apologize for that. But the TV's a bit loud, and I can't really do much about it right now. But, uh, allow me to, and if you guys see this, ignore the shadow. I know it looks like my hair is sticking out, but that's the shadow behind me. But, um, there's something I wanted to explain to you guys. I do apologize for that, guys. I actually had to clean the camera lens because this thing does get dirty at times. Oh, I was watching. Hey, Sam, hey, Lance. I actually am going to be inviting a new member of the live stream family here in just a moment. So give me just a sec. I will invite her. Let me... Get a little light here. There we go. And the invite is sent. So, but um, this is something that a lot of you guys may not know because I know a lot of people get confused about this. So I figured I'd make a live stream to kind of explain everything because people do get confused about this a lot. Um, like, yeah, my life growing up was great, like, not gonna lie, you know, but, um, a lot of you guys may or may not know this, I know very few know about this, but I'm actually explaining this for the new member of Tess, who actually asked me a good question, you know, how many kids did, you know, my mom having that kind of sparked the entire Thing that I'm doing now to clear things up. That way, it's, it's easier to explain. Yo, what up, Tess? Welcome to the live stream family. Welcome to the live stream where crazy shit happens and whatever happens, happens. You know, we go crazy, we go nuts, whatever. But, uh, I was born one pound, 12 ounces, with one kidney and one and a half lungs, as some of you may or may not know. And I wasn't supposed to live past birth. And my real parents, my birth parents, couldn't take care of me, because my birth father went to jail the day I was born and my birth mother couldn't, you know, take care of me. So my grandmother, you know, adopted me.
And, you know, shortly after she adopted me, several years went by and, you know, my birth mother passed away in a house fire. Never really knew her, so it didn't really affect me like it would most. Like, it didn't really affect me. Like, yeah, I felt bad that that happened, but, you know, it is what it is. But uh, my grandmother who adopted me the day I was born, she became my mom. Uh, my adoptive dad was Army, 82nd Airborne Division, um, Staff Sergeant, United States Army. But uh, she had, well, actually, my birth mom had me and my older brother, well, not really an older brother, but kind of like same age brother. Like, we were right in that margin of being the same age. But, um,. My birth mom had two kids. She had myself and, you know, my older brother, Buddy, who we actually reached out to. Couldn't get in contact with him because they told him that, you know, he didn't have a birth family. That like, They basically told him that we weren't his family, but that is what it is. Can't do anything about that. Oh, who's this new person? Yo, Rachel, what up? It's been a minute. But, uh, all in all, you know, like right now, because my now mom, my grandmother, who adopted me, who's been my mom since the day I was born. Um, because of that, I have my birth father who became my older brother. I have my older brother who died from lung cancer several years, like a few years ago, as you guys know. Um, and then you have my two older sisters who are very much still alive. And then you obviously have my brother, buddy, who... Well, the day I was born, we were both born, he was put into foster care, so we couldn't really do anything about it, which sucks, but it is what it is. But, uh, and a lot of people don't realize this, but, and I know, like, a lot of people might think I get depressed by it. And by everything that's going on, but not really. Like, I see everything, you know, as, you know, not only, you know, part of the bigger picture, but almost as a blessing. Like, you know, like with this show coming up, like, I feel like, you know, this is the, sh like, this show is what I was meant to do. Like, I was meant to do it at this age this year. Like, everything I've done has led up to this. Just like everything I've gone through was meant to be a lesson for me. Like, everything from the mentally abusive relationships to the being left, you know, multiple times. Like, I feel like for me, that was more of a lesson. I mean, it was a sucky lesson. And a, well, it wasn't so much a sucky lesson, but it was like a really s shitty way to learn that lesson. Like those lessons, I should say. Like, and yeah, I went through, you know, seven years of mental abuse with literally one of my exes that I was on and off with for seven years, which that wasn't easy. Like that was honestly one of the hardest points in my life. Um, I mean, yeah, I've had, you know, some severe losses over the years. <clears throat> like this is something that not a lot of people know about because it wasn't all over the news. Um, shortly after we moved here, like in this house, I was actually in ninth, or no, I was in 10th grade getting ready to be a junior in high school.
and like I was seeing this girl Cynthia who if you guys don't know I do have a picture of in my pictures like on here you guys can go through it's actually in my mobile uploads or my timeline photos either one I don't remember which but um if you guys don't, who don't know who that is, look for a picture of a very young me wearing a Pirates of the Caribbean shirt with my arm around this one girl. That was actually my first high school sweetheart, Cynthia, who unfortunately passed away my junior year due to a drunk driving accident because of her boyfriend, my ex-best friend, Josh, which... And it sucked because it was like right down the road. Yo, what up, Ian? If you guys don't know, Ian here is actually on the label that, you know, I am part of Bloodshot Records. He's actually the co-founder, so shout out to Bradley. Ian, what up, brother? Shout out to Viker, bro. What up? But, um, like I was saying, you know, like, I've suffered through hardships, like, you know, with the death of my first high school girlfriend, Cynthia, which that was hard, yes, but, you know, like, things got a little harder after that, like, they got easier, but then they got harder, like, you know, obviously with the death of, you know, my best friend David, and then shortly after that, the death of my older brother like a couple of years ago and literally within that same year I lost three people in 2015. February 3rd I lost my older brother due to lung cancer from smoking. Um, I lost my childhood best friend Stephen or Stefan either way. Um, he actually died from a random brain aneurysm which was unexpected and then my older well not really my older brother but he was like literally like family like my brother um zach he was actually unfortunately murdered and stuff so that was that one right there is the one that really hit hard and it was on the news um if you guys don't know it was called the akron pizza shop murder you guys can look it up on youtube it, it was all over the place like, we did a candlelight vigil at a couple schools and everything. But uh, most recently, you know, one of the major underground artists, Kota Oda, passed away um, from a crack cocaine overdose. It was accidental. But, you know, he did die from that, which that did suck, like, immensely because that was somebody I worked with. Like, that was one of my best friends both inside and outside of music so that was a that was a hard thing to deal with but if you guys don't know the design that I put as my profile picture that may end up being the shirt design for the show that I do on June 21st of this year so if you guys are in Akron be sure to stop by the vortex 8 p.m. free show no admission, you guys can come in free of charge. So if you're in the Akron area on June 21st at 8 p.m., head to the Vortex. If you need the address, I'll message it to you. I will send that shit to you. But the design that is as my profile picture right now, um, if I can, you know, get that as a design, for a shirt, I will be wearing that because not only does I represent, you know, the label that me and Ian started, which is Bloodshot Records, but it also represents my buddy Aiden Schroeder's label, Freak Show Records. And then underneath both of the labels in the middle, um, the names that are on there are artists that we've worked with, like my brother Eric Scrubwell, Scully. And most importantly, the big one on there is Kota Oda, who was... Hold on one minute, guys. What? 
All right, sorry about that, guys. That's something I had to do real quick. But, uh... Whew, sorry about that, guys. Running back and forth and I'm down the stairs is not easy. Because we do have a good size set of stairs. It's like freaking, I think like 20, 40 stairs up and down. So it's a pretty good set staircase. But, uh, but all in all, you know, like, you know, as I said, you know, I've had my fair share of ups and downs, but, you know, I don't let that stop me. You know, I keep things going. And you guys are probably wondering, like, what happened to my brother Buddy. Um, the day that we were born, he was actually put in foster care uh, within one to two years of us being born. And get this, the state of Alaska said, because my mom, well, my grandmother, who's now my mom, um, wanted to adopt him so we could be raised together. And the state of Alaska wouldn't let us do it because they told us, well, my mom, that it would affect him. Like, how is, you know, like, how is being adopted when you don't, when you're not even old enough to realize what's going on, how is that going to affect you? So, you know, I never got to see my older, I only saw my, my brother, like, maybe one time at a McDonald's, and I didn't even know it was him. I was, like, maybe four or five years old at the time. But haven't seen him since. He pretty much denies that we're his family because of his foster family, which sucks. And so, I mean, other than that, I mean, yeah, that does suck. It does hurt that they did that. But all in all, you know, like, it is what it is. There ain't nothing I can do about it. So, I mean, you know, and like I said, you know, I've been through hell, you know. Like, I know what a lot of these people, you know, go through. You know, going through suicide, depression. You know, just feeling like you don't belong. And that's kind of, in a way, how I felt throughout my entire high school career. Like, I really felt like I wasn't meant for high school. Like, I really felt like, you know, I just didn't belong there. I mean, yeah, obviously I had some very, very good friends who ultimately wound up becoming, like, my family over the years. But other than that, it's like, why go? Like, during high school, all I would do is just sit there and draw and write songs and poetry. 
Like, that's all I would do the entire time. And I would actually piss off my teachers because I would always be that kid that would draw on the back of their classwork when they were done. Hey, Aiden, what's going on, buddy? Um, nothing much. I'm just actually explaining to a... Co Hold on one minute, guys. I'll be right back. Hey everybody, sorry about that. I had a um, had to do a couple of food runs. We actually got some soft pretzels, and I had to run one upstairs to our roommate, and then grab mine. Hey, shout out to Tiffany. What's good? But uh, you know, like I said, guys, you know. Growing up, you know, I had a really weird, well, I won't say weird life. <clears throat> it was more of a militarized life confused with, you know, a bunch of stuff mixed in. Um, you know, the whole deal with, you know, moving around, you know, because of growing up in the military life, you know, me being an army brat to the age of, like, I was an army brat from like the age of one to like the age of 12, 14, somewhere in there. But, uh, you know, like, you know, it's, it's been a crazy ride over the years. Like it really has, not going to lie. I've had my fair shares of, you know, devastations, losses. You know, I've watched, you know, friends, loved ones, you know, pass away quite a bit. Um, you know, I've watched, you know, artists that I grew up listening to that I really admired pass away. Most recently, you know, last year, which the anniversary for that is coming up which is the death of Chester Bennington from last year, which if you guys don't know, Mike is releasing his brand new album 
which is post-traumatic, in June. So on the 21st of June, if you guys are at the Vortex, I will be doing my version, well, a dubstep version of a couple of Linkin Park songs to honor Chester. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing that for you guys. I know a lot of you are just as big of Linkin Park fans as I am. So you guys can expect a tribute in that sense to Chester. But, um, you know, like I said, I've had my fair share of losses, like from, you know, loved ones to, you know, even friends that are in the military dying overseas. I'm like, you know, but then, like, you know, watching my friends die that are military based, like, that kind of, that kind of comes with the territory. Like, you kind of learn to, like, you don't want it to happen, but it's something that, you know, you got to learn to accept and expect. So, it definitely ain't easy, but, you know, it's it comes with the territory, just like, you know, with my artwork and my music being stolen over the years. That, in a sense, comes with the territory of being an artist in both sense of music and artwork. Like, that's something that just, it comes with the territory. You kind of got to learn to work your way around that, which is what I've been doing for these last few months. I've been really establishing myself. Um, I finally got my stuff registered, copywritten, so... I mean, you know, and for me, it's easier to copyright my music because everybody knows my sound. Like, you know, everybody knows my sound. They know what I do. But with my artwork, it's a little harder due to people with Photoshop who like to remove logos, who like to steal art. So that's a little bit more harder to defend than my music. And that's why I don't really, you know, I don't really copyright my artwork as much due to the fact of, you know, people with, you know, stuff like Photoshop and logo removers or watermark removers. So, I mean, that's like one of the things that's very, very hard to... You know, do it. And even if I were to take and do a video on how I did it, they could easily just take out the audio and redo the video. So, I mean, it's really hard to defend my artwork. That's why I don't post it up as much. Mm. Pardon me. But that's why I don't post my artwork up as much. Like, you know, like I do have some good artwork. It's just I don't post it up as much because people keep on claiming, you know, oh, this belongs to this person or this belongs to that person. And it sucks. Because I've had people telling me that my artwork needs to be in art galleries. And they're right. But I have two issues with that. Art thieves and no money to pay to get my artwork into magazines or an art gallery. And actually, there's a third problem. Every time I price my artwork at a price that is worth, like, that the artwork is worth, nobody wants to buy it because I feel, oh, it's too expensive or I can't afford it when I know that's a bullshit lie. They just want free shit. And as I've said before, I don't do free. The only time I do free stuff is, like, you know, if it's, like, a graffiti piece and I, like, I feel like being nice, you know, then I'll do it. But when it comes to my actual artwork, like my abstract artwork, my flame art, my, you know, my comic book characters, my anime characters, and like my truly good art, you know, that's the stuff that I am trying to sell. And you guys don't know, as I do have something right there that I can't do anything about. But, uh, you know, nobody wants to pay the prices that my artwork is truly worth. 
And it, it's sad. And what's even sadder is, if you guys don't know, I made an art website with all my artwork on it. Like, literally all my best artwork. Like, I've done stuff as a tribute to Hayao Miyazaki, who, if you guys don't know, is, like, literally a god in the animation and illustration world. Um, he's actually the head of Studio Ghibli. And if you guys don't know Studio Ghibli, look them up. They've done a lot of good movies like Kiki's Delivery Service, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, Castle in the Sky. Uh, more notably, Ponyo, which I love Ponyo. Good movie. Um, they did um, How's Moving Castle, which I like that one a lot. That one's a favorite of mine. Uh, the Black Cat, the Cat, Re or Black Cat Returns. And so, you know, I've seen all of Hayao Miyazaki's movies, and I can honestly say, as far as, like, my art styles go, he's very much a big influence. Uh, just as much as guys like Stan Lee, um, you know, Picasso, Van Gogh, like, they're all major influences on a lot of my art. But, you know, we live in an age where it's so easy to, you know, to steal artwork and to get away with it that it makes honest, hardworking artists like myself trying to make a name for themselves to put it out there. Like, it's so easy for anybody to steal art and get away with it that it's like, why do I even bother... You know, doing it. Like, you know, why even bother doing artwork like that when it's just going to get stolen? You know? That's why I do these little, you know, basically graphic design pieces for you guys for free. Because, like, I know that if I do that, you know, it'll get out there and I know that you guys won't take my shit. Like, I've had people claiming my artwork for many years now, which is why I don't do, you know, a lot of my digital high-end, high-quality, gallery-worthy paintings. Well, I mean, I do do it, but I just don't post it up, and that's a major reason why. Like, even if I were to copyright it, and I were to put a watermark on it, they would still take and remove it. And people keep telling me, oh, you need to copyright it, you need to do this, you need to do that. Well, dude, I've done everything I can. But what these fuckers have in Photoshop and watermark remover on Photoshop, and them able to get away with it, it makes it that much harder. It literally makes it hard for me to post my best start. But I me, mean, I know my stuff belongs in galleries. I get it. I get that 110%, but it's very hard for me to do that when people like to steal my artwork. And the fact, and that's just on, that's just adding on to the fact that nobody wants to buy my artwork for 30, 40, 50 bucks. Because that's what it's truly worth. I've had people telling me that, dude, your artwork is worth more than 30, 40, 50 bucks. But I price it at that because that's the price that, you know, your normal art runs for. And that's actually another reason as to why a lot of my artwork that I do do, my high-end stuff, I usually wind up putting on clothing. Like, you know, I do have two custom clothing shops. One's basically gaming-driven. And then my DK Customs one, that's more or less where I do all my other stuff, like, my artwork, you know, my my custom stuff. Hey, shout out to Lisa. What is up? But um, I do have my very own art site. Um, I just don't put it out there for, you know, obvious reasons because of people you know, saying that I'm a fake and this and that. So I don't put it out there as much. 
Like, as a matter of fact, today I was actually checking my R page to keep it from getting shut down. And I got several messages saying, oh, you're not the original artist of this piece. You know, this person is. And at one point, my art page almost got shut down because of these people. So, like, it's very dangerous posting my art up. That's why I don't put my truly best stuff to be sold. That's why I put it on clothing. But if you guys do want custom shoes for a good price, um, I can send you the link to my Rage On shop. Where, you know, and if you guys really think about it, 80 bucks for a custom pair of shoes ain't bad. Like, that really ain't bad at all. Because if you think about it, your high end shoe store, you're paying 150, 140 bucks. But with me, when you're getting one of a kind custom shoes that nobody else in the world has, you're paying only 80 bucks for it. And think about this. And you're not only paying for the shoe to be designed itself, but you're also paying for a piece of artwork. In a sense. And yes, I do plan on starting up another Rage On shop. Strictly for my graffiti artwork. I do plan on doing that. It's going to be mostly for my graffiti art. And my abstract art. Um, I don't know when I'm going to start that Rage On shop. But it should be very, very soon. Um... But like I said, I mean, and for that price, you know, like really the only person that owns a custom pair of my shoes is Sam Watkins over in the UK. He paid 80 bucks. Granted, I didn't get 80 bucks out of it because he lives in the UK. They had to pay for his shipping overseas and international fees and all that shit. So that's understandable. But if you live here in the U.S., it's 80 bucks. I'm pretty sure I'll get the 80 bucks. It just depends on where in the world you live. But, guys, if you do want some custom shoes with your name on it in graffiti, message me. I'll do the artwork up literally tonight. I'll post it up tonight. Or if you want it on a hoodie, a shirt, let me know. I do do custom requests. You know, I do take requests for my clothing. So if you guys want a pair of shoes, a shirt, a hoodie, um, a blanket, a towel, a pillow, whatever you guys want with your name or nickname or whatever you want on it, message me what you want on it. You know, what colors you want, and I will do it up. I have no problem doing requests for you guys for my Rage On shop for you guys. Um, as a matter of fact, I do have some custom stuff on the way for the show. I have postcards on the way. I have a custom bracelet on the way sent by a fan, so thank you. Um, you know, I do have custom stuff on the way, which I'm very excited about. But guys, like I said, if you want some of my custom artwork on any kind of clothing, hit me up with your designs. Like, if you want, like, a nickname done in graffiti, hit me up, message me, I'll set up the stuff, I'll do the design, post it on the thing, and I'll... I will let you guys know when it's up, and then you guys can buy it. But with that being said, y'all, I need to hop off here because, as you guys know, I have a soft pretzel in there with my name on it, so I need y'all to chow down on that. But um, if you guys do want a custom graffiti 
name design with your name or nickname or whatever you want on it, let me know. I'll do the design and I will post it up on rageon.com and send you guys the link. So get at me with your designs. I do take requests. I don't care whether it's a shirt, whether it's a phone case, a bandana, um, you know, socks, underwear, full size onesies, um, you know, shorts, um, yoga pants, t shirts, tank tops, dresses, you know, whatever you guys want, hit me up. The only thing I cannot do yet are hats, and that's because I'm still working on trying to make that first bit of sales. So, guys, get at me with your designs. Message me. And I'll see you guys later on. Peace. Again, message me with your designs, and I will get started, like, right away. Peace.